Welcome back! Okay, this time our UI guide is a bit different. Blizzard's UI revamp, while partially featured, does give us some new options. Today, I'm going to take you through 100% stock setups, through to stock plus minimal add-ons, then our LVUI, ideal setup, and finally, my own personalized custom UI, based on all the things that I like. Like today's sponsor, squarespace.com forward slash Ballular Gaming, where code Ballular Gaming gets you 10% off an annual plan. They are my go to for building a web presence, where their easy to use award winning templates get you off to a fantastic start, which you can then build on by using their intuitive page editor. And if you want to go fancy, there is code injection, there is custom CSS support as well. But they're more than that, they actually help you run your business. Do you want to do a mailing list? Sorted. E-commerce, incredibly well built. Paid memberships, also sorted. When I needed to hire some staff, I spun up a Squarespace site in under 30 minutes to do that. Doing other work for our studio, their templates have handled the basics, letting me do the customization. They're the fast and easy way to build a fantastic web presence today, letting you stand out. Be that your business, your portfolio, anything else. I mean, imagine you're applying to a job. Would you not feel better if the link that you're sending over with your portfolio is a beautiful, well-designed looking website? That's going to make a better impression. So get started today. Squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, code Bellular Gaming for 10% off an annual plan. Thanks to Squarespace. Let's go. Okay, this is the Teach a Man to Fish segment. A good UI gets out of the way when it's not needed. It tells you what you need to know and it reduces junk information so that you don't get confused. You have clarity and can make the best decisions. Good UI also puts the world view first, meaning that you can actually enjoy the game world that the developers have made, and also more clearly see mechanics. Your eyes should not have to dart across the screen all over the place, so core information should be sensibly placed and reliably placed so that you can do things by default. All while keeping the area around your character's feet relatively clear because if you can't see the floor, you're likely to end up on it. Section 1 will be a few permutations of a 100% stock UI. Section 2 will add weak ores into the mix. 3 will showcase our LVI preset. And 4 will be my own personalized setup. 100% stock. Okay, I'll outline the basic setup and then variations. This is, of course, gameplay first. So, the first thing we got to do is design the core combat info area which will allow you to see what you need to see, which are your rotational class abilities, your offensive cooldowns, defensive cooldowns, buffs, debuffs, player, target frames, etc. And action bars will be our first port of call. Place action bar one between your character and target frame, such that they align like this. Action bar two can go below that. And I did it in this way because by default, action bar one cannot be hidden outside of combat. So, if it's going to be visible all the time, it may as well be nice and aligned. Bar 1 is where I put my core class abilities, and I play around with the quantity of buttons and the scale of that bar depending on what class I'm playing. For Marksmanship Hunter, there aren't as many buttons as Disc Priest, as an example. Then I place Action Bar 3 above Action Bar 1, and I use this for tracking offensive cooldowns. I personally prefer these to be a bit smaller and also to just put as few icons as I need there. And I actually do not keybind these because I find the text looks a bit messy and my core key bindings are handled elsewhere in the UI. Now it is vital for this and for bar 2 that you set the checkbox to hide unused like action bar slots. That means that if there's not an ability there, you won't see anything. And that means that you can make it nice and symmetrical and just visually pleasing and clean. Okay, what about your defensive abilities then? Well, I recommend using perhaps bar 4 as another small tracking area with similar settings. You can toy around to see where you'd like to put this. You could put it beside or on top of, um, you know, your offensive cooldown tracking bar. Or you could put them anywhere. You could have a vertical bar at the side of the middle bit of the screen if you wanted. Then for buffs and debuffs, I align these above and below the character frame, and then I limit the icon count within a row so that uh, they just sort of stay nice and aligned. This usually does the job, but hey, Blizzard, seriously, we absolutely need better filtering options for these because they can get really unwieldy. Now, as for my key bindings, right? Well, I put a number of bars, three actually, at the very bottom of the screen. 
These are either always hidden or are only visible in combat. The idea is to not look at them for information, so I just make these quite small, and they really just exist for keybinding purposes. Okay, what if you want to recreate weak auras, right? That sort of idea. If you really wanted to do that without using weak auras, then a bit of that's impossible, right? True weak auras functionality cannot be done in the game. But if all that you want is to see core tracking, then here's an idea of what a horizontal and vertical option may look like. You can edit this sort of thing as you see fit, perhaps uh, tracking large cooldowns in the big slots, small utility cooldowns in the small slots, you could lower your core bars and have this be roughly where you usually place your weak ores. Or you could do something weird like a vertical alignment and offset. Uh, but you should, of course, uncheck all the show buttons so that you can make this look clean and symmetrical. Now, sadly, Blizzard does not support a class power bar or a separate display for class resources like the job bars in FF14. This is a real shame, it's something they should add in a future update. And while the personal resource display does exist, and in a very basic way is quite nice, and unfortunately is anchored to your character, and that means that it's really hard to make that mesh with other bits of UI that you may like, because, well, it just goes all over the place and it ends up being quite messy. Blizzard could gain a lot if they just redid the personal resource display and gave us a few more checkboxes for it. So now you understand things, I provided a base import link for this. Tweak it, of course, to what makes sense for your spec. I mean, here's it for Hunter, where I don't have all that many core abilities to bind in action bar one, where, um, yeah, I, I just use two rows of six keys. It's nice and symmetrical, it's got all the info that I would need. But moving to, say, a Disc Priest, it can be a bit more cluttered, but because I plan on using click casting and help harm macros, it ends up not being that bad. Okay then, as for the rest of the elements in this, well sadly, customization of many other UI elements is not great by default. I did move my minimap and objective tracker um, down and just to the right. I kind of like how it visually balances out the UI and you can just hide the objective tracker. Then all that's really left is placing raid frames, the encounter bar, and party frames, which I toggle to display as raid frames, and you know, in the style of raid frames, so that I can have a consistent experience within the game. And also, be sure to flick on these settings for raid frames, they'll just have more info. Which, you know, maybe you'll want all of them, maybe you won't. Simple enough though. Overall, this is easy to tweak, but it is kind of limited. The lack of some more granular fading options is really frustrating here, as is the lack of filters for buffs and debuffs, and there's really dumb things like no ability to resize the minimap and zero options for the micro menu, bag bar, and XP bar. So let's try to take it up a notch. I'll start off with nameplates, and here is our preset for an add-on called Plater. Basically, it's just nameplates that are far better than stock and Matt created this preset with the intent of giving it absolutely fantastic functionality, but to be as visually close to the stock nameplates that Blizzard made as is possible. Now, most of us do on a DPS meter, so I just use details, and uh, you can skin that to blend in as unobtrusively as possible. Now, for further customization of the base UI, I do like to add in a few add-ons that have cropped up recently since the new UI shipped. Here's a good example, frame color. But that's you tweak the color of frames if you want to. Conceal is an add-on that gives you better visibility options. And if you want no borders on your action bars, then hide action bar borders does just that. There's another add-on that's good for making click through. Uh, basically your, your action bars click through so they can't be clicked on. So you could combine say that and have no borders and you could have a little tracking bar that does look just a little bit more like weak ores. Also, health bar color lets you update your health bar to be the color of your class, which is definitely good. Okay, so this is all well and good, but ultimately, let's just say you're a raider, you're a mythic plus or a PvPer, and you really want weak auras. I can't blame you. And Athenar's Dragonflight class weak aura sets are so powerful it's hard to believe. They are absolutely incredible, especially with all the custom options that are included. And uh, the same goes for Luxthros as well. Uh, these two guys do so much work for the community, and uh, they deserve a lot of credit. So, as long as you've got weak ores installed, you just um, paste the 
code over from wago.io into the import thing, put it where you want, and that's that. Now, if you're using weak ores for class gameplay, then the setup that I outlined previously won't really be needed, right? You can throw all your binds to your bottom bars, at the very, you know, bottom of the screen, and just place the weak ore between your player and target frames. If you're using weak ores as well, then the buff and debuff tracking likely won't be as important to you, so you can just put that way up to the top right or something, like a more stock position. And of course, if you are using weak ores, you'll likely be using raid and dungeon weak aura packs and a boss mod like DBM and Bigwigs. So again, you won't really need Blizzard stock buffs and debuffs as much. Okay, so this is all well and good, but what if you like how LVUI looks and you just want all of its features in the customization? I mean, Elv is absolutely packed with features and it's what both Matt and I use throughout Shadowlands. Our setup, therefore, hasn't actually changed with Dragonflight. Now, if you want to fully dive into that, you can check out this video that we did for the launch of Shadowlands. All of the information is, in fact, completely correct then as it is now, basically, because really not that much has changed. Now, we've uh, got a weak ores and non-weak ores version there. It's all done in a document and an import string that makes it very easy. And look, LVUI just does a hell of a lot. It is extremely powerful. It is a UI that will serve you very well from a functionality perspective. That being said, to be honest with you, I'm not going to use it personally because for me, it clashes with the art style of WoW to a degree that I'm just no longer comfortable with. But hey, the new class weak auras, uh, you know, with them being so fantastic, I think going stock UI plus those weak auras is a brilliant choice, perhaps for the majority of players, provided you put in one or two of those little tweak add-ons to just bring Blizzard stuff slightly more up to par or if Blizzard's action bars are not at all good enough for you, of course, there's always the option of just installing Bartender 4. Okay, in the few seconds that have passed for you, about five days have passed for me. Some of that's been working out my own personal setup. And you know what? After investigating loads of angles and wanting to go full custom with Grid, Bartender, you know, the full nine yards, I actually just realized that a small number of lightweight add-ons could like just tweak the existing Blizz rework to suit my needs. So here's what I'm rolling with. Blizzard HUD Tweaks is an add-on that just gives you a bunch of uh, options for like the kind of conditional based fading of UI elements like my player and target frames, as well as the back button and micro menu and action bar one. Add this to the sort of default like template setup that I mentioned earlier in the video and uh, there's literally nothing really in your screen when you're out of combat because all the stuff fades appropriately. And what's lovely is that Blizz HUD tweaks the add-on, it lets you basically, um, it makes it so that if you have a target, the add-on will act as if you are in combat. So if you target something, your UI will appear which uh, is great because you don't want a situation where you know you're looking at the raid boss but only when you get aggro will, will your UI even appear, right? Um, and it all, of course, will, uh, you know, if I mouse over a bar, the bar will be visible and I can use it. So to me, that's perfect. I then installed Hide Action Bar Borders, which funnily enough, hides Action Bar Borders and looks super clean. Then I grabbed Lux Thros's Weak Aura Packs, I scaled them down a little bit and I placed them where I like them. Uh, gotta say, Lux Thros, I mean, man, what a just, whew. They're really, really good. Uh, and then staying with Weak Auras, I installed Raid Ability Timeline. I love this one. It pulls all of your DPM timers onto a timeline and just like puts them in one place. I just love what it does for the game's visuals and personally, I find it more comfortable. Then I imported Ultimate Mouse Cursor, which helps the mouse not get lost in the soup during combat. And it's got a few other handy features too, if you want, like uh, range, swing timer, global cooldown, uh, just tracking of things like that and, and some more things. Then we've got Opi. I love Opi, it's such a brilliant little add-on. So it spawns a ring whenever you hold down a key of your choice, you, you know, move your mouse in a direction, let go of the key, and it will execute whatever you've put there. And it's great for just having essentially a utility like key ring that has, you know, your, your wormhole, your hearthstone, your yak mount. So I have one for all of those and I have another one for uh, raid markers. And that's, uh, that's that. Then plater, which, uh, you know, I, I just use um, with the profile and mat setup. That's it. 
<laughs> right? Easy. I use the relevant dungeon and raid weak auras, of course, when the time arises. And once I get to grips with PvP a bit, I am sure I will throw a few small little things uh, into the mix. But I imagine weak auras will cover most of that. Another thing then, the Blizzard buff and debuff bars, I mean, you know, good effort, but they do need more functions. And uh, right now my buff and debuff tracking, uh, that stuff is covered by weak ores. So the Blizzard buff and debuff bars are back to their normal place. Details is my DPS meter. And that's it. There are a few other add-ons like Auctionator, or kind of beyond the scope of today's video because it's just core UI. So overall then, I'm actually really pleased with what I've been able to get up to here. It's uh, really quick to set up, it relies mostly in stock tools, and to me it's quite visually uh, uncluttered when, you know, I'm not in combat, which I really like when I'm just going about the world doing things, because it turns out Blizzard's artists do a really good job. And it also does fill me with a little bit of hope that, uh, I mean, literally if Blizzard could just incorporate what a few small add-ons are doing into their basic UI, then like almost everything that I'm doing other than the weak auras, that would be doable with the base UI. So I think eventually a very, very low add-on count future is actually possible. But anyway, there you go. For me, it's uh, just a UI that's nice and minimal, only really shows me the things that I need to see and uh, that's all I need to be happy. Okay. Of course, uh, we'll have links in the description to things that help you out. Um, and that's really it for the video. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And if you wouldn't mind, I guess, uh, tweet your UI at me. I'd really love to see what, uh, what you're rolling with for this expansion. All right, have a good one. I'll see you next time.